Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise God. It's a joy to know Jesus uh, as our Savior and our soon, soon, soon coming King. He is the one that is in control. If we'll just let him be in control, that's just the, uh, that's the issue that is at the uh, bottom of all of it. Amen. And uh, I, I was thinking, uh, and uh, I know that uh, Nikki looked at you, Mom, whenever you had said that, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm just going to confess this, whatever you think, whatever it's worth. I'm going to tell you what, every week, most every day, I pray God's blood and protection up over my children on the road to and from work. And if they're in activities, I pray that God protect them on the road wherever they go. I'm going to tell you what, that's no fun place to be. <laughs> Most of us have, have had, had experiences on the road that hasn't always been exciting and joyful. Amen. And you're probably, as myself, can remember some time if it hadn't been for God, you'd probably already be with him if he had not a protection in some of those areas. So uh, thank the Lord, thank the Lord. Amen. Well, that didn't cost you nothing. That's free. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for the opportunity we have to, uh, to be here. And uh, we're, uh, we're glad that we can, uh, can be here through the, uh, through the study of his word. Uh, I hope you've been enjoying it. You've been, been doing okay with this? All right. Amen. The revelation of Jesus Christ. With well, the revelation of Christ that was given to John, John recorded it and given it to us. We're going to continue in that this evening. We, uh, we was in chapter last Wednesday evening, and we didn't get through with it. What chapter was that? Chapter number 17. Do you remember when you were 17 in age? I just had to say that. Amen. You thought you knew everything, and Mom and Dad didn't know nothing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Yeah, you was wanting to spread those wings, and they was wanting to keep clipping them. <laughs> Amen. Yes, chapter number 17 was the uh, chapter that we were on. I think that we had uh, gotten all the way down to uh, the latter portion of which was verse number what? Verse number 14. Boy, y'all y'all doing good. Amen. All the way down to verse number 14. So uh, we're going to do that. We'll probably be uh, concluding that chapter. And I'm sure, Sister Debbie, you gave them a handout it's on chapter 18 as well. So we'll follow through on that when we get to it. But let's conclude chapter 17 first of all. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Ask God that he would touch you to minister this evening in the ministry and the study of his word. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you this evening. Lord Jesus you're the great I am. You're the first and the last. Without you, we know we're nothing. But in and through you, we know this evening, Lord, that your word can be illuminated in and through and to us, Lord. Father, we want to leave with a, with a little bit more of a knowledge, Father, of your word. Leave with a little more of an incentive and an, and an encouragement. And we know that only you can do it in and through us by your spirit. So we ask you this evening, Lord, let that anointing ministering and through this vessel and minister giving each one in a sound of our voice lord those by the way of live stream as well lord to receive your word and we know that you're the one that will inspire it to be given us so we thank you now for the precious blood covering and the blood protection that makes it all possible in your holy righteous and majestic name in your name jesus and all of god's children said amen 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 just to give you a little bit of a update, you remember Revelations 17 was dealing with primarily with the great whore or the harlot, ever which one you wanted to summarize it as such. And it went into the types of religions that it's talking about, and we'll do with that perhaps maybe a little bit more tonight, later on after 17, but it's dealing, dealing with the... Uh, the Babylons, and is talking about the religions uh, that is going to hold sway during uh, that period of time. And we learned also last uh, week that it is through these religions uh, 
that as well that has been dominating through the years and it is still religion is one of the more dominant things that is in our society today we stood it about and we looked at what the ten horns were what they represented them and how that they were still yet future talked about the seventh head talked about the mountain talking about that religion that that was representing in that area and talking about the persecution that was going on during that time. We also looked at the area through chapter 17 where that uh, because John seeing that, uh, he was uh, really just amazed. But yet through his amazement, listen to me, because he was amazed, and what is it that the angel told John? God, through that angel, was telling John, I understand your amazement to so I'm going to explain some things to you. You hear this preacher tonight, church. Whenever you come to that place uh, that you have some question you wonder, and you're kind of at awe about things, uh, you be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. God loves you enough. He cares enough. He'll give you instructions uh, most of the time through His Word, but if not through His Spirit, uh, to encourage you and enlighten you. I think most of us uh, have been there on some occasions, uh, I can religi- remember some myself uh, that I was just really just at awe whenever the Lord had given me some things. And uh, I would give you some of those things. Be obvious. was no doubt it was the Almighty God. But it would be like I was tooting my own horn, and I am not going to do that. I just um, am humbled, and I thank God for it today. And those times, as a matter of fact, I'll confess, was after I had left the church the last time. It was during that period of time that God did some of these things so obvious. Not worthy why he did, but to him be the glory, and I will never, never, never forget it. Amen. Amen. Now, he hasn't done anything in the past year or so, or so but uh, amen. If he gets ready to, I hope I'm ready to receive it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God. So he'll do it for any of us. That's what I'm saying. So understand what I'm relating to you. So uh, we looked at in the closing part, we was talking about in Daniel. If you read and went back and rehearsed some in Daniel chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, whenever Daniel gave you the understandings about the, uh, the ten horns and gave you the awareness about what the revised Rome, it's not going to be revived Rome, but revised Rome that is going to be taking place and how the little horn that right pardon me, that rises up, the little horn we know is going to be the Antichrist that is going to come forth. We learn where he's coming forth from. And then in verse number 12, we saw that it's going to be the short period of time that this is going to be taking place. And by the space of time, and in Daniel, maybe you went back and looked at that in Daniel 2, verse 34 and 35. And then in verse number 13, following up, as it is talking about how that there was the, the Antichrist that is making up the eighth kingdom. I thought the one thing that is so unique about this, and you may not appreciate it, I think you have, as I did, to understand what these ten horns, what the eighth kingdom was, what the seventh mountain was, and these things. And these have been opened up unto us to where we understand, and we hear, and we know what they were. And that enlightenment is an encouragement. Can I hear a good amen? So it is on that standpoint then. Let's move into verse 13 was talking about the eighth kingdom, which was the Antichrist, which is still yet to come. Let's go to verse number 14 now. And in verse number 14, we're going to read that verse. Then we're going to go back and talk about it just a little bit. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For He is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they who are with Him are called and chosen and faithful. I want to bring your attention to, first of all, to take note. When he said he is Lord of Lords, the Lord is capitalized. This is the Word of God. The word Lords is small letter. The same word as for King. The word King is capitalized. The other word Kings, plural, is small letter. He is Lord and he is King above all Lords and above all kings. But here in this verse of Scripture, what he is talking about, he's letting us know there's going to be war that's going to take place with the Lamb because the Antichrist is going to be attacking 
He's going to be attacking Israel. But as he is attacking Israel, this is the Antichrist or Satan's way to attack Christ. Because we know that Israel is God's chosen people, his chosen nation, no matter what. And this is why we see the attacks and the things that happen upon Israel as they do. It is coming against Christ and against the Lamb. But you know that he also says that the Lamb did overcome them because of those uh, that had come against him. This is talking about Armageddon and talking about the battle that's going to be happening. Uh, but this is talking about his second coming when Jesus is going to literally come back uh, and he's going to set up house here on planet Earth, if you would please. Uh, and you're going to enjoy some of those scriptures and you're already knowledgeable of them. But that's why he says, uh, faith comes to be here, hearing by the word of God. And that's why we're here because the word encourages and it enlightens us. And so it's going to encourage us further on down the road. When we look at chapter 19 and chapter 20, 21, 22, it's going to be uh, very refreshing to us about what's going to be happening and taking place during that period of time. So whenever we also look uh, and we see these says uh, that they are the ones that are called and they're chosen and faithful. Called, chosen, faithful them. Listen to me. Every saint of God, you see it in your notes, Jew and Gentile alike is going to come back with Christ at his second coming. It is at that second coming as we look and we're going to see how that Christ himself is going to set up his kingdom and he's going to rule and reign. It brings us to the reality that it's not going to be just Jews but it's going to be you and I as well because I don't think any of you are a Jew, are you? Most of us are, are Gentiles, um, but that's what it is, uh, is alluding to and that uh, we're called, we're chosen, and we're faithful. Hallelujah. Tonight is proving you're faithful, faithful unto God and unto Him, and even those by the way of live stream as well. God bless you. Amen. Let, let me give you this, this little notation uh, there from this uh, verse number 14 as well that is talking about that. Let me give you this. Titus had came against Jerusalem. They're talking about whenever Satan comes against Israel, that's his way of coming against God, his way of coming against the Lamb of God, okay? Back in 70 A.D., you'll read this in history, that uh, Titus came against Jerusalem. And uh, during the, a four-month siege, Titus uh, came and he thoroughly destroyed that city of Jerusalem. He destroyed the temple. During that 70 AD, that period of time, when the chaos took place and it happened, there were one million Jews that were killed and lost their lives. 100,000 of them was taken captive during that time. Thousands has also had also been killed prior to this because of siege and leading up to that. We know that Israel was dissolved. We know that now we know we've got to be looking closer to the imminent return of Christ himself because in 1948 it was declared a nation again. But it lets us see Israel, I mean, there was almost 2,000 years not quite, but yet that it went through the turmoil. And when we know as far as how was that Hitler was able to do what he did in Germany and, and through the Holocaust, that there were six million Jews that were killed, thrown in the ovens and tortured and all that had happened. I'm saying all of that to you for these next scriptures, that they're going to be a little bit more illuminating to you because it is building up to what God has allowed. But I'm telling you tonight, church, God in control. He's going to be the end victor. And the reason he's allowing it is because the faithful, the chosen, the ones that he has called, they're the ones that's going to make it through it all. Through it all, we learn to trust in Jesus. Can I hear a good amen? Verse number 15. In verse number 15, notice what it says. Read, I'm going to read the verse. And he said unto me, 
the waters which you saw, where the whore sits. I'm sorry, that's, uh, yes, that is, that's verse 15. Where the whore sits are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And it tells us uh, in this portion of Scripture it is alluding to, and let us know when it's talking about the word he, that's talking about the angel that is speaking unto when he says me, that's talking about John naturally. The waters which he saw, this is talking about, this is the symbolism uh, that is talk, talking about where the whore sits, uh, talking about the multitudes of peoples and nations uh, and tongues that are out there. And this actually is in your notes. You see where it covers the entirety of the world. And remember, the biggest just of this is really going to be probably taking place over in the Middle East or over around in that area. But uh, the entire world world is going to be affected during that seven year tribulation period forget it not and because of that there's going to be billions that are going to lose their lives and the sad part about it is that there's going to be billions that most likely are going to go to hell you say now preacher now that's that's being pretty dogmatic and that's being pretty presumptuous. So not really, because the population of the world today is seven plus billion. I don't know how many people there have been since creation, but I do know what the Word says. We avoid this. We don't like to accept it. But reality is, it says, broad is the way, wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And many there will be that will enter thereat. But he says there's also going to be narrow is the way. And narrow is the gate. Few there's going to be that will enter into it. It's a sad statement. But when we look in our world and we see what is happening today, it's not hard to see it and realize far more are going to go to heaven, going to go to hell than go to heaven. Isn't that sad? So sad, so sad. But anyway, okay, verse number 16. Everybody still with me? Okay. Now, in verse number 16, now, uh, please excuse the typographical area. Uh, uh, I know I'm perfect, and I know everybody knows I'm perfect, but I do make a mistake every once in a while. I'm being facetious, please. Okay. Lord knows I'm far, and they've never been perfect, never will be perfect. But he says, and I, in your notes it says, and the then horns. Is that what you're, is that what it says? It's not then horns, okay? Maybe thin horns, but no, no, really it is ten. The word ten is what that's supposed to be. So uh, you, can, you can mark through that or write the proper one in there or whatever you want to be. But okay. And the ten horns uh, which you saw upon the beast. Um, this is talking about the ten nations now that is going to make up the seventh head that we talked about last week. It continues on, and he says, These shall hate the whore. Remember what the whore was? This is the religion, the dominating religion that is going to be in that period of time getting ready to set precedents and dominations for the last part of that seven-year period. That's who this harlot is going to be. It is through that uh, in the process uh, of that time uh, that we see that it tells us uh, that some, uh, if not all, in your notes, uh, is going to come out of the Middle East. Uh, here I want you to know, Islam rules uh, this part of the world. Uh, They're in the Middle East over in that area. The religion of Islam will be put down by this confederacy, or it's going to be put down uh, by this religion that is going to become dominant uh, during that period of time. What is that religion? We'll talk about it in just one second. Uh, because it says, And shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat. And there's another typographical area. I can't believe I ever made a mistake, but mm, that's supposed to be her. So just mark a little area through the here, all right? <laughs> the last E, mark through it because the word is her. Everybody still with me now? Okay. Her flesh and burn her with fire. The ten nations, these are under the Antichrist. 
And the Antichrist is going to carry out the campaign that's going to eliminate that which is in regards to that religion because he's going to become, become concerned, even be jealous, because he is going to have all these religions to worship him. Who is he? He is really going to be, if I can use this, he is the devil personified in the flesh. That's what the Antichrist is going to be. We know there's going to be the false prophet. We know there's going to be the fallen angel that's going to be there. But this is representative of what is going to be happening during that period of time. Everybody still with me now? It lets us know that uh, he is not going to allow anything to replace him. The dominance that's going to be happening, it is plum scary in one sense. So, but in verse number 17, For God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast. Remember what I told you. No matter what, God is still in control. It's the choice that God has given man. He can choose God or not choose God. And he tells us and he continues. And he says, And until the words of God shall be fulfilled. It is letting us know here in this, uh, these scriptures uh, that these leaders of these nations, uh, they're given their authority to the beast. Uh, the beast being the Antichrist here in this portion. Remember the beast, it is more than identifying just, just the uh, Antichrist. It also talks about as far as the fallen angel. Also talks about the false prophet. Also going to talk about an empire or a kingdom. But it says, uh, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. When it's talking about this... Uh, this is talking about um, this will be this is going to be happening last until the great tribulation has ended. This is going to be the end part of it. Remember, we, we say these parenthetical statements that are there don't mean they're in sequence, uh, but it's giving us information uh, so we'll know what's going to be happening, uh, even though it may not be just one, two, three. It may be one, two, and then six, seven. You understand what I'm saying? That's what the parenthetical statements uh, is really is really uh talking about them. And it is talking about that which is going to be at the Battle of Armageddon, which is going to be taking place in which these nations are going to be totally, totally destroyed. You can read that in Daniel chapter 2 and verses number 34 and 35 that that is going to happen. Daniel, as we've repair, re, re, reported to you over and over again, it just goes in sequence with Revelations and they complement one another for the understanding of what each one is saying. So that's what it's uh, eluding, eluding to and relating to. The ten horns are going to be that ten kingdoms that is going to make up the mystery Babylon as we wear up. The end of Christ is going to be jealous of this and, and because of fear that that kingdom is going to try to dominate him, he's going to destroy her. That's why in verse number 17, it lets us know that there's going to be the end result uh, that's going to come and God's going to be the ultimate victor. And in verse number 18, it says, And the woman which you saw is the great city. This is talking about the literal city, Babylon. Okay? In verse, I mean in Revelation chapter 18. We'll be dealing with that in more in detail. In Revelation 18, it talks about how the Babylon is going to be rebuilt, rebuilt and is going to reign over the kings of the earth. That's where that the center of all influence uh, is going to be. Rebuilt Babylon is going to be one of the great main commercial centers of the world, uh, as well as the religious center. He's going to be the religious center that's going to take the place of the great whore because we're going to see how in the next chapter, how that the domination of Mr. Babylon is going to be destroyed. And we see how that the Antichrist... Uh, He's going, to take, he's going to replace the main religions of the world at this time and at that time as well and other religions as himself that's going to be, um, be worshipped. It's all, it all began, it's interesting, I want, and I put this notation in here so you would have it. It all began at Babylon and it all is going to end at Babylon. You can read it in Genesis chapter number 11, verses 1 through 9. 
And then you can read it also in Revelation uh, chapter 18 and verse number 10. Uh, and how that God is going to be the ultimate uh, result uh, in destroying uh, the one that started the junk. You remember that in, uh, in Genesis, how it all started with, uh, with the Bible in there, having to confuse their languages so they couldn't understand. It was all one language uh, until they decided they was going to build a tower to God and uh, try to make themselves equal to God and so forth. Uh, there's no one that's going to make themselves equal to God as great and merciful and as kind and as just as God is because only, only God is going to be God no matter what. Thank the Lord because he's just and he's gracious and he's loving and he's kind. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. All right, everybody with me now? Praise the Lord. That concludes. That did conclude it, did it? All right. <laughs> I'm being facetious, all right. Praise the Lord. But let's go to the, uh, to the next chapter. Chapter number what? Chapter number 18. Chapter number 18. Look into your, your notes that we've given you and, uh, or that Sister Debbie gave you. That's so gracious to, to uh, print all these out for you. I'm going to ask you again, did all of you bring your notes back? Hey, no. Almost all. <laughs> I've been complimenting you and say, hey, y'all are awesome. Amen. You brought your homework back home <laughs> where it needs to be. Praise the Lord. Well, if you, if you can, don't forget because uh, our, our time is slipping away nationally because I'm probably talking too much. But, uh, well, if I didn't talk at all, you could just read this. And I wouldn't have to comment, comment on any of it, would I? That wouldn't be no fun, would it? Amen. <laughs> Boy, I thank you for saying that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But at any rate, uh, and, and being within all honesty, probably not going to cover a whole lot of this, but I'd like to dig into chapter 18 for a little bit because we do have about uh, six or seven minutes till eight. And uh, so we usually uh, go to a little bit after eight. I, I'll try not to, uh, to belabor it because I, I don't want to wear the saints out. I, I know that uh, uh, across the way that I know that there was discipline before we got into this revelations that we always did close services at eight o'clock and there's nothing wrong with that and uh if it's all your fault could we go beyond eight o'clock all right <laughs> praise the lord amen thank you for your thank you for your kindness and your support you're you're a blessed and an awesome church god bless you revelations chapter number 18 and revelations chapter number 18 this is going to be talking about the fall of babylon this is going to be talking about the two Babylons that we're going to be dealing with them. Come back talking about the destruction of literal Babylon, which is going to be revealed in detail in this chapter. And this chapter also concerns her future destiny, which is going to be involved and through the involvement of the thorough destruction of Babylon, literal Babylon itself. It's even going to be speaking of as far as with the mystery as well. This is in verses 1 through 24. Verses 1 through 24, Revelation chapter 18. Everybody ready now? Amen. Verse number 1. Let's read that entire verse. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. This again in this chapter is another one of those parenthetical chapters that gives us information. Does not mean everything's happening in sequence, uh, but it's for the knowledge of what's going to be happening and taking place. So when he talks about that after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven. This angel does seem to be a little bit different from, from one of the other angels. Remember that angel was uh, one of the angels that had one of the vile judgments uh, that came when he talked to in chapter 17. This is a different angel here that was in verse number one of chapter 17 says so having great power which talk about the angel himself and no doubt he because of the emphasis of why that we've stated here he must be greater than one of the other seven that were there so uh, and i think you'll come to that uh understanding of it as well as we uh, as we go through this so, because uh, this angel who immediately is going to precede the coming of Christ, uh, he could be either Gabriel or Michael. He is uh, really one of the outstanding angels. Uh, 
he must of necessity be, be one of, if not uh, one of the, the greatest angels that is in the, in the creation of God himself um, due, to the, due to the magnificence uh, of the, the great coming uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and uh, because of his coming uh, and this angel and the signifying of it, uh, it makes you realize that, uh, uh, I mean, you know that there are, there are, if I can say this correctly, there are, there are categories, there are uh, positions uh, that are there in the heavenlies, uh, just like they are here in some of this earthly place, uh, as far as responsibilities uh, and as far as powers uh, and for what, is, what can be delegated to be done and can be taken care of. Well, I'll agree with that. Amen. So that's what is uh, really wanting to bring to your attention and understanding here. So verse number two, are you ready? It said, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen. This is talking about the literal Babylon. This is talking about the city, as well as a mystery Babylon, the religion mystery Babylon that has fallen. He said it's become the habitation. He's given the explanation of what literal Babylon, mystery Babylon was. Uh, of the whole ever foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. I like the way the, I like the, way the scripture, I don't know about the other, but uh, I like what King James, when King James said, ever hateful bird. I uh, wonder why he said hateful bird. Now you allow me to express this to you. Because when he's talking about the hateful bird, I believe that he is talking about, when we talk about the vultures, we talk about buzzards in reality and such like, they are used at times, we're going to go, not going to go back and take the time to do all this, in the Word of God as being symbols of demons. Did you know that? I'm not going to show that to you right now, but uh, give you a little bit of food for thought, all right? And uh, it is through that I thought, wow, whenever he used that statement, when he said hateful bird. But that's what he's alluding to, okay? Because, uh, I mean, you know, demons can infiltrate animals. I mean, look at all the hogs that ended up dying over there. Excuse me, pigs. But anyway, praise the Lord. Anyway, it says, uh, and the city itself, uh, with the last uh, of the last days as an infestation of demon spirits of every sort. This really is the capital evil of the world in that period of time. It is so, so sad. And church, Lord, I could get on my soapbox, but Lord, help me, I won't do it. But I'm telling you, there are some nations on earth today I would like to call them by name, but I want to, that are controlled by demon power in the capital city. And the leaders are controlled by demon power. Believe it or not, you don't have to believe it. But I'm telling you, you can take it to the bank and cash it to, because it's a reality. And so during that period of time, it's not hard when you see what's happening today in reality of how that's going to be manifesting itself in. Verse number 3, it says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of her wrath, of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. This is talking about the time of the Antichrist, and it's talking about alluding to that Babylon has represented from the very beginning, as we talked about that there in Genesis about all the false religions that is being dealt with. And it's saying also, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Is it not amazing? But literal Babylon is going to be the highlight of earth, of its delicacies, of the things that it is going to be in control of, and man is going to be looking to it. Its headquarters is going to be in Babylon. The Antichrist is going to make it possible for many to get rich during this short period of time and during this great tribulation period, but it's a reality that is going to happen. Babylon is going to fall. 
that literal city. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's look at the verdict of Babylon right quick, and then we'll, we'll bring this to a close. We may not get, may or may not get through with the verdict of Babylon, but you want to you look at a few of these verses anyway. Let's look at a couple of them right quick, if we may. Uh, we talked about the fall of Babylon. Let's talk about the verdict of Babylon. We pretty well know it. We read the scripture. We identify with it. But let's look at it and identify with it uh, if we shall. It says, And I heard another voice from heaven, which is different from the angel of the first verse, okay, saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers uh, of her sins. Uh, when he's talking about my people, naturally, he's referring to all believers. Uh, Listen to me, all over the world uh, for all time. This is alluding to, that's going to be the time whenever he is going to be setting up terrain and judgment is going to take place. I made a notation, you can look at it, for the entire book of Revelation, even through broadly addressing itself to the entirety of mankind, is primarily for Israel. This is the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse number 7 gives us some. But it is designed to bring Israel back to God as well for the identification of where man has been and where he's going to end up. It says also in that verse of Scripture, and that you receive not of her plagues. If believers fail to come out from among the world's system, then and now, in, in proper respect, uh, they are going to experience uh, the judgment uh, the same as unbelievers. Uh, that's a reality. It's not because that's what God wants. Uh, it's because of what we choose. Uh, it's because of what we choose to do ourselves. Uh, just like all the temptations that are out there in that world, uh, we choose uh, if we get involved uh, and getting soaked up uh, in those things. Uh, verse number 5, uh, For her sins uh, have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. If you don't mind an old, uh, an old Louisiana cliche, God's had a crawl full of it. And He's going to bring an end to it. The rebellion uh, against God... Uh, because the only way, the only way God will forget sins and iniquities uh, is by man placing uh, his confidence, uh, his faith, uh, his trust, uh, his love uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, is the only way it's going to happen. Um, see how Revelations is not only talking about what's going to happen in the end time, but it is the message of, of faith and hope that we have in Christ uh, even now when we come to him. Verse number 6, and I think we're probably closed with verse number 6, I guess. Uh, but verse number 6 says, And reward her, even as the... Well, I'll tell you what. Let's read verse 5 and 6 together. Go back to verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Verse 6, And reward her, even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works in the cup which she has filled, filled, fill, and that's proper wording there in Scripture, to her double. You know what God is saying? And then we're going to talk about the notes here. God is saying because what man has done and they have chosen that way of evil and wrong, then likewise they're going to see in the end result uh, of why they're going to reap the wrath of God. And it's not going to be pleasant and it's not going to be good. For as your note says, as God will do such to this rebuilt city of Babylon that will suffer the judgment of the ages, God's answer to man's rebellion will be the destruction of Babylon. We're going to be seeing how that there's going to be such sorrow about that's going to be happening. Talk about the apostate church and they who have been against God's people. These prayers and these seeking God is going to be answered. Praise, praise God. It's taken a time for it to come, but it's going to happen. I, I wanted, I wanted to close with this, uh, with this little notation that I had that I had run across here with verse uh, number six, talking about. Uh, Man's rebellion, uh, 
and uh, about the destruction of Babylon, the apostate church, and uh, they that have been against God's people is going is going to be answered. I thought this was interesting. I noted this. There was an effort uh, that was made by then President Bush whenever he was uh, in office to change the government uh, in Iraq. How, how many of you know where Babylon is going to be? It's in the country of Iraq. Okay, That's where the original Babylon is. It's a destructive place right now. Okay, But he says, and it lets us know, which in fact, uh, this was the right thing to do. It is a part of the process which will enable Babylon to be rebuilt. This is what one of the scholars related. I thought, wow, that's interesting. Think about that. Let me read that again. The effort of President Bush to change the government in Iraq, which in fact was the right thing to do, is a part of the process which will enable Babylon to be rebuilt. We are living in the end times. We are pulling our troops completely out. The Taliban is always is already building up its forces and its threats because America's leaving. I don't think America should have been there in no 18 years anyway. Bottom line. But reality is, when you're looking at that part of the world, it is going to be the conjecture of the unfolding of the reality of what's going to be happening at the end time. At the end time. Amen? Amen. It's 10 after 8, so I'm going to quit. Praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, if, I, if I forget, I won't take time to write it down. I think I can remember. Amen. I won't promise it, but you remind me, won't you? All right? Praise the Lord. Okie dokie. Praise the Lord. Well, we've covered a good bit of ground this, uh, this evening. You got a question or comment you would like to make in regards to uh, chapter 17 and into chapter number 18. Anyone? Okay. It does. That's a good question. That's a good question. She asked how long will the Battle of Armageddon last? That's a good question. Don't really know exactly how long it's going to last. It talks about for a day. And a day, it says there will be no night. The light's going to illuminate during that period of time. Be no night during that time. But as far as it being 24 hours or being 36 hours, don't really know for sure. It won't be a long time, but don't know exactly how long it will be. But it's a good question. Destroyed then? All nations, that's going to be the climax of what's going to happen at that end time. That's what's going to declare the judgment of God against those nations. That's what's going to declare his judgment against them that's going to come against him. All the nation, it's hard for us to picture, it's hard for us to visualize it with all this, uh, uh, this nuclear stuff that's going on and what have you. It's hard for us to visualize it, but it's going to be a literal battle that's going to be happening. It's going to be engaged, and they're going to be fighting against God. But guess who's going to be the victor? God. He's going to deal with it just till he gets tired of it, and he's going to bring Aquinas to it. You're talking about the seven nations you st t that was forming? It's going to be those nations that are going to be against God during that period of time. Okay. Yes. It won't be just those seven nations. It's going to be all those nations. Those nations were called, remember there were, there were seven we talked about, which old Rome was included, but now we're talking about the uh, eighth kingdom that's going to come up, which the Antichrist is going to be involved in, from the revised Rome that is going to be there. It's not just that nation, but the other nations are going to be giving their support to the Antichrist. China, Russia, Iran, any of them, any other small nation. They're going to be giving their total support to the Antichrist. And these are the ones that's going to be in the battle with Jesus himself up there in the battle of Armageddon. It's, it's, it's really mind-boggling. Amen. Okay? Yeah, Brother Donald. Okay. Uh, verse 17. 
For God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast. I read this a little bit, and then I read it a little bit more, and I studied a little bit. Good. And I get the impression through this verse that when Jesus came to earth, he came as man mm -hmm. for our salvation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Devil loves to imitate God. Deception is his middle name. Yeah. So he sends the Antichrist back as a man. Yep. To deceive the world. Yep. Because the devil can't be here just yet. Right. God releases these nations because they don't want anything to do with God. They would rather serve the devil. There you go. So God don't give up. But I believe in this verse he gave out. He get he don't want any He get, he he God don't give up. Right. What was but that next I part? believe in this verse he gave out. Okay. Because he gave them his will. Yeah, he did. I agree. To agree with the Antichrist. Yep. Because they were so evil and so vile. Yep. They were unrepentant. He turned them over to do those things, uh, which was, uh, in essence, was evil. That's true. Their nature. Yep. Yep. He talks about that in Romans. That's true. I yeah. pray that I never get that bad that God releases me to my own faith. Oh, Lord, ain't that the truth? And it is so much in that. And there in Second Thessalonians, he's talking about that. But there in Romans, whenever he's talking about it, people don't realize, man, when you start, when you start diddy dallying with this junk that's going on in our nation today, God turns you over to a reprobate mind. Whenever you do those things that God hates, hey, I don't care what kind of scholar you are. I don't care how you want to label it. To, if God hates it, to, he hates it. And if he turns you over to a reprobate mind, you're doomed. You're over with, because that's God, and that's the Word, and that's just the way that it is. So, and it's scary, but it's reality. So, good point. Good point. Anyone else? Okay. Say it again. What's the longest length of time that this can possibly be? Which which part, brother? Or the, Rhodes? the conclusion of all of this that's coming as we move you, on. You talking about the seven year period or the uh well, huh? that perhaps the whole thing. It's the seven year period is going to be seven years. Seven years. Yeah. It will be seven years. But it is going to be divided up into three and a half years uh, and for the different timing elements that things are going to be unfolding and happening. The last three and a half years is going to be primarily within when these vile or bold judgments sir are going to be turned loose. When Babylon is going to be at its peak, and Mr. Babylon at its peak, it's going to be during that last three and a half year, all this is going to be happening. And that first three and a half year, it's going to be the building up to this, if I read that correctly. And so it's just going to be, it's going to be seven years. Here's something we got to realize. When we look at what the seven year period is going to be, it will be seven years. But there's going to be a time element to moving to that seven years. It don't mean that whenever the rapture takes place, we go in the seven-year period. No, it does not. The scripture does not say that. We could go into all the evidence that talks about the rapture. We could do that. But the bottom line is, uh, I think there's going to be a timing element to, after the rapture happens, uh, that then uh, there's going to be the timing element before the great tribulation is going to take place. But for the actual great tribulation to happen, it's going to definitely be that seven-year period. Does that make sense, Brother Rose? Okay. The scripture says a day with the Lord as is a thousand years or a thousand years is as one day. Correct. Does that fit in any of this in any way? It possibly could. I cannot, I can't contradict that. 
That's what I say about today as we see, uh, Lord, I was not going to say this. I, I, all I'm, all I'm going to do, I just want to mention this, which is very uh, strategic, and that is the fact that where we are right now, you're talking about literal Babylon, that's going to be the ruling dominant city of the world. That's ruins is what that is right now. But, like you said, a thousand years one day, one day is a thousand years. Don't know how long a period it's going to be. I understand. Sure. Sure. I don't think it'll be a thousand years, but it could be a long time. I agree totally. We just don't know. You know, it's uh, that's where that uh, God in His Word uh, it says that His ways are higher than our ways, and His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. You're just not going to know what God is, and He, he ain't going to let you know it. <laughs> so good, but that's a good point. There's a saying there that timing is a, is the same with me. Yeah, and it's well taken. You bet you, you bet you, because uh, if we knew it then we'd be as smart as God. <laughs> Amen. No, oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Ain't that the truth? Amen. Yeah, Brother Don? Ron, I mean, Brother Ron. Oh, no, I'm, I'm fine. I think you covered it. Oh, no. oh, okay, cool. Very good. No, that's a good point. He ain't, he ain't no way. It ain't no way. That's why I said his ways is higher than our ways, his thoughts than our thoughts. I think one of the great examples we have is an Ezekiel. If you ever want to get stirred and moved, just read Ezekiel there. Uh, the first part of Ezekiel, I've got the exact chapter and verses there, where it shows God, and they were looking and seeing God, uh, who he was, and his majesticness, his mindness. Uh, scary. It's scary. That's why no man looks upon God and lives. Why are we going to have a new body? Because that's the only way we're going to be able to transition into that kingdom. A new mind and a new body. What a Savior. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I'm going to have something new. <laughs> I'm going to have hair. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Anyone else? Okay. All right. All arch clear. Amen. Awesome. God bless you. Thank you for the, uh, thank you for the comments, and uh, thank you so much for the, uh, uh, for the questions. Praise the Lord. Hey, that always brings forth some illumination to our thinking. Amen. Well, are you ready to go? I'm not ready to go to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't know the hour of the day. We just know we've got to keep our gaze heavenward. One of the greatest things, that, please, please excuse me for reiterating. The rapture, Paul was looking for the rapture in the day of Paul. Right now, look for it. It could happen any time. We don't know when it's going to happen. Because other things, there's, I was talking about further road. God's timing is his timing. And that's the important thing. That's awesome. Stand with me, would you? God bless you. Thank you for being here this evening. And uh, uh, Brother Ron, Sister Nikki, God bless you guys. I, I know it's a long way. Y'all just float in here anytime y'all get ready. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> you, you what? <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Father God, we love you tonight. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. And above all, thank you for your precious blood. Your blood covering, your blood cleansing, your blood protection. Lord, let it rest up over each one as we leave this, as we leave this sanctuary, but not your presence, Lord. To go with us as we go to our places of abode, Lord. Looking unto you because we know you are the author and the finish of our faith, Lord. Father, we pray your protection upon us. Lord, we hear that this Lord, we hear that this virus in a different scope is, is lurking about, and we hear there are those that are having some battles with that. Lord, I pray your blood cover and protection over this church, even those by the way of live stream.
protect each one, Lord, that was submissive and surrender to you. Father, protect them against, Lord, that they will not have to be subjected to any of this sickness in Jesus' name. Bless in the coming in and the going out. Your blessing and your protection, we thank you for as we commit them in your care in your love. We love you, love you in Jesus' name. And all of God's children said, amen, amen, amen. God bless you. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. And if the voice I had heard